Hello and welcome to Superstar Gaming. Today we'll be talking about the new Animal Crossing Switch title which was recently announced to be coming out in 2019. In this video I'll be talking about the top 5 things that'll probably be in Animal Crossing Switch given what this Switch's hardware can handle, what other recent big titles on the Switch are doing, and other new peripherals available. So let's get started. Number 5. Motion Control. In Animal Crossing City Folk, we were able to control our characters with the Wii remotes to do pretty much everything. However, in my personal opinion, the motion control in City Folk was pretty finicky. On the Switch, we can look forward to more precise motion controls with the Joy-Con's superior sensitivity compared to the original Wii remotes or even Wii Motion Plus controllers. Regardless, motion control still isn't perfect on the Switch. In Mario Odyssey, most of the times I messed up were pretty much due to motion controls not doing exactly what I wanted them to do. Due to inherent imperfection with motion control in general, it'd be really nice to have the ability to just completely turn them off. It's definitely a nice feature to have in the game, but sometimes you just want the controller to do exactly what you want, and when it comes to motion controls, you don't always get that. Coming in at number 4, we have Labo integration. Labo on their own aren't really that impressive. The games they're packaged with are basically just tech demos and really have no replayability to them. However, when used as controllers in real games like Animal Crossing, they can add really cool and interesting mechanics. In Animal Crossing in particular, we could see a redesigned fishing system with more complexity and the ability to use the Labo fishing rod to catch fish in a new and interesting way that isn't just tapping A at the right time to catch them. I don't really see any way they could make a Labo for bug catching, so the only other Labo I think could be usable in Animal Crossing is the keyboard. There are already a lot of instruments available in the game as items, so they could let you play music in the game in real time using these instruments with a keyboard telling them which notes to play. I think allowing players to play music for their friends online would be a really cool and fun feature to have, and having more realistic fishing would also be really cool and fun to use. So I really hope they take advantage of these, and maybe even make a bundle that allows you to purchase the game with all compatible Labo. For number 3 on the list, we have more memory for save data. When it comes to handhelds, the save data is stored on the game cartridge, which heavily limits its size. On TV consoles like the Switch, there is a large internal memory bank where save data is stored instead, which allows this data to take up as much space as the developers want. What I personally would like to see is a lot more design slots. A lot of players, myself included, love to pave their town with a variety of paths. In New Leaf, this was made a lot easier with the addition of QR code designs. However, since each character can only have 10 design slots at a time, I found myself creating new characters just to hold more design slots for paving my town. Since data is just stored on the Switch, which has gigabytes of space on it, it'd be really awesome if whenever you ran out of design slots, you could just add another 10 with an absurd limit of something like 999 to ensure nobody ever runs out. They could also allow players to make patterns with a much higher resolution as well, allowing players to make their designs look much crisper. In addition to adding more design slots, we could also see more slots for item storage and maybe even the ability to stack items within storage. Items like gems and flowers that I usually didn't want to get rid of but would fill up my storage boxes, I ended up also resorting to making additional characters to hold all of them. However, having the ability to stack items within storage would remove this problem as well. They could also add specialized storage boxes for items like this, as well as items that you may have a variety of, such as fossils and gyroids that would usually fill up a ton of slots. The final save data related thing we can probably all see eye to eye on is increasing the size of your town. It's pretty mind blowing that the first Animal Crossing game, which was originally released on the N64 in Japan almost 20 years ago, and then later ported to the GameCube in America, had the largest town clocking in at 30 acres. I mean really, how ridiculous is that? That a game originally released on the N64 has had the most space to work with out of any of the Animal Crossing games. In addition to this, it remains as the only game where you can get three tier towns, or towns that have three different ground levels. City folk you can only have two, and in New Leaf, the town was completely flat with only one ground level, not counting the beach, especially since you couldn't even build public works there. Imagine if Animal Crossing Switch had something absurd like 60 acres. You'd have so much space to work with. The randomness in the town could be so much greater with some people ending up with two branching rivers, two and three tear towns being commonplace, and tons of space to build all sorts of public works. 
With all this extra space in the town, they can also move core structures like Nook's store, Nook's homes, the post office, the Able Sisters, the museum, and all that junk back into the town itself instead of having it disconnected on the main street, which I personally wasn't a big fan of. For number 2 on the list, we have Pop-In Multiplayer, or the ability to pick up a Joy-Con and instantly join the game as another player. This gives quite a lot of advantages. Living in a household with another sibling, it was great having Animal Crossing on a handheld because I always had my own console to play on, so I didn't have to share or take turns with anybody. On the Switch, we've seen games like Odyssey allow a player to pick up a controller and play as Cappy, which was pretty bare bones to be honest, but on the new upcoming title, Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee, a second player will be able to join instantly and help with battles as well. For Animal Crossing, it'd be really awesome if someone could just pick up a Joy-Con and join as another player in the town via split-screen co-op. This would make things a lot better for a lot of people, as the average household probably won't have more than one Switch, and it allows siblings to play together on the same system without having to take turns. And now with number one on our list, improvements to multiplayer and new online activities. Playing New Leaf on the 3DS, you probably thought the online worked okay for the most part, but those of you who tried to unlock the different styles for the train station like I did would quickly realize how much unnecessary overhead goes into connecting and disconnecting to other players' towns. This isn't really that much of an issue when you're just going to your friend's town one time, but it gets really annoying when you have to do it a hundred times to unlock something. Basically, to join or leave somebody's town, every player in the town must stop what they're doing and save their game, making this challenge take just a ridiculous amount of time. Now this is mainly done this way to prevent item duplication, so players can't just save the game with items in their inventory, head over to somebody else's town, drop the items, and then turn off to allow to duplicate their items. But by turning off the game at the right time, item duplication is still consistently possible with this system, so it basically just slows things down for no reason. Now since the Switch has much better hardware, I'm hoping they make online much more fluid, allowing players to join and leave other players' towns without disrupting anybody, and this could also be done to be more secure than the other system by implementing a micro-save system, which would basically save your inventory or specific tiles on the ground that have items dropped on them whenever something is changed. Since the entire town and everything in it isn't being saved, it can be efficient enough to be done in real time, making multiplayer much faster and providing a rock-solid system to prevent item duplication. In addition to this, they could also make a sort of online hub where players can freely join and leave whenever they want. Here you could play mini-games with random people or friends to get items, and also invite other people to your town to hang out. They could also add a safety so people not on your friends list can't actually modify your town when they join by picking up items or cutting down trees, only allowing them to explore, catch bugs, and fish, which would allow for a stress-free way to play with random people you don't know. And with that, we conclude my top 5 list of hardware and peripheral related things we could see in the next Animal Crossing game coming on the Switch next year. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more videos like this one, you can subscribe. And if you think I missed anything, you can tell me in the comments below, and I hope you have a great day.